On today's episode of The Vantage Point, we're in for a historical geography treat. In the first five episodes, we saw a good representation of Scottish, Irish, and Welsh surnames, not to mention a few English names. We also found that some of the surnames that viewers requested go back to the earliest days of Anglo-Saxon Britain and ancient kingdoms like Strathclyde. Moreover, we also found that some surnames originated in what's today Germany and even Scandinavia. Today on the vantage point, as it turns out, we have a number of Norman surnames that originated in France. Before we get to the 10 family names on today's show, let's take about two minutes to talk a bit about the Normans and their invading allies because they introduced an estimated 10,000 words, including surnames, into the English language. I hope you'll join me. September 9-11, which was in the early days of the climatic epoch known as the Medieval Optimum, Population growth in Scandinavia accelerated. Vikings took to the seas to exploit vulnerable villages and port cities along the Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea. The Vikings were especially interested in monasteries that offered lots of loot and few swords to repel them. Among the Viking leaders was a tall man named Rollo. In 911, Rollo had his eyes set on West Francia. After successful raids into the land of vineyards, especially up the Seine River where Viking longships threatened Paris, Francia King Charles III, or Charles the Simple, made a pact with Rollo. Rollo was granted a region known as Neustria, but it was renamed Normandy, the land of the Northmen. Normandy occupies the northwestern coastal areas of France. The Vikings' imprint on the cultures of Great Britain and Ireland were rather minor compared to the impact of the Normans. Through alliances and marriages, Norwegian King Harold Hadrada and a descendant of Rollo named William, the Duke of Normandy, believed they had a rightful claim to the English throne. When England's Anglo-Saxon king, Edward the Confessor, died childless in January 1066, Hardrada and Duke William were angered because Harold Godwinson assumed the throne. In an attempt to force his claim, Harold Hardrada invaded the northwest of England. Godwinson launched a successful offensive against the Norwegian king. Hardrada was killed at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in Yorkshire on the 25th of September, 1066. Three days later, William, Duke of Normandy, landed with thousands of men at Pevensey in Sussex. Godwinson had undertaken a forced march to stop Hardrada. Now he had to turn right around and march to the south to the other end of England to repel the Duke of Normandy. Among the Duke's forces were Normans, Britons, and Flemish allies. The extent to which Harold Godwinson was exhausted from two long marches across his kingdom, not to mention a heated battle against a formidable foe, can be speculated. But he was defeated at the Battle of Hastings on the 14th of October, 1066. William's coronation took place at Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day, 1066. It took him a decade for William to replace the English elites and the church and government with loyal French-speaking followers. Perhaps a complete transition to a Francophonic culture was diverted because English women married Norman men. The offspring of those blended families were taught by their mothers. So even though speaking French was a status symbol among the elites, the everyday people still spoke the old language, albeit enriched with French names and useful words. Let's get started. Number one, Lyle. My sources point to an Anglo-French or Norman origin. It's more commonly spelled with an I than Y. Lyle arrived in Britain with the Normans and their allies in 1066. The surname is found in England, the southwest of Scotland, and in Ulster. McLeisick says that Lyle came into Ireland from the southwest of Scotland. It's fairly numerous in the northern counties of Derry and Antrim. Number two, Lindsay. The surname Lindsay is either traceable to the Anglo-Saxons or to the Normans. It first appeared in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in reference to a Lincolnshire family, but the name also appeared as a Norman surname in Scotland. There's some debate about original meaning. Lincoln was a Roman word, so Lindsay, it could be argued, embraced that legacy. It could also point to a Teutonic personal name, Lind, which referred to a snake or a serpent. There's yet another source for Lindsay. According to Black, the name in Scotland first appears as a territorial name of a place in Normandy. Nevertheless, Clan Lindsay in Scotland is now as Scottish as other Norman names like Bruce and Graham. The surname is fairly common in Ulster and it also appears uh, to be found in Wales. A paper trail and assistance of a reputable genealogist might be needed to track down the origin of specific lines of Lindsay. Number three, Carlin. 
As I looked into the origins of the surname Carlin, I couldn't help but recall the American comedian George Carlin. He had an edgy yet critical take on life. At any rate, the surname Carlin could have multiple origins and meanings that stretch from Northern England and Scotland to Ireland. George Fraser Black doesn't really discuss Carlin as a common surname in Scotland, so given that Northern Ireland's County Tyrone and elsewhere in the Emerald Isle have quite a few Carlins, Ireland has to be included in the discussion on possible origins of the name. In that case, Carlin is a shortened form of Carolyn. Number four, Dominie. The surname Dominie entered Britain with the invading Normans in 1066. Of course, the Normans brought French allies with them from Brittany, so it's not uncommon to find English surnames that can be traced back to places in Brittany and Normandy. However, Dominie is not a locative name. Dominie is derived from a child born on the Lord's Day or Sunday. A review of sources for Ireland and Scotland failed to show a lot of information on Dominie, so it looks like England or France would be the most likely sources for the name. Number five, Oliver. In 2016, I had the honor and privilege of working with Scotland's Neil Oliver on a BBC documentary titled Scotland and the Clan. In America, it's titled Who Put the Clan in KKK? It's available on Amazon. It was my job to act as a tour guide in Virginia and provide historical backgrounds for Scottish migrations to the American South. I was a fan of Neil Oliver before meeting him and I became an admirer of the person behind the image as a result of working with him. At any rate, the surname Oliver is one of those names that could have multiple origins. One such point of origin is in France, where it stems from one who grows olives. Another source is the Danish-Norwegian personal name Olaf. The classic leans more to labeling Oliver as an Anglo-Norman name. He points out that Oliver has a respectable presence in County Limerick and in Ulster. A paper trail and the assistance of a reputable genealogist might be needed to track down the origin of specific lines of Oliver. Number six, Adkins. In the surname literature that I have in my library, Adkins is regarded as an English surname, but is found in Ireland as Atkins. In Scotland, the name may also appear as Atkins or Aiken. In all cases, the name is a diminutive of Adam, so it's ultimately traceable to the Bible. Families with the Adkins or Adkins surname have immigrated from England, Scotland, Wales, or Ireland. Again, a paper trail is needed to investigate specific lines. Browning, number seven. Browning was in England before the Norman Conquest. Harrison and Black agree that it's an old English name derived from the Brune son. Black and Harrison provide information on Browning, but it's absent from the classics writings on Irish surnames. It looks like, then, that the island of Great Britain would be the most likely origin of the surname in southern Appalachia. Number eight, Hensley. If I've met one person named Hensley, I've met a hundred. In the Cumberland Gap area, there's a historic place called the Hensley Settlement. Even with cars and trucks, it's not an easy place to reach. The surname most likely means dweller in the woods. Hensley Settlement matches that pretty good. While Hensley first appeared in southwestern England's Devon, it's found in small numbers throughout Great Britain and parts of Ireland. If I were a betting person, which I'm really not, I would wager that the Hensleys of Southern Appalachia have roots in southwestern England. Number nine, Crum. Crum is not found in Harrison's book on the surnames of the United Kingdom. Admittedly, Harrison's book has an English bias. McClysick argues that the surname came into Ireland from the Inner Hebrides in Scotland. Black claims that Crum was a popular name in Dumbarton, Scotland in the 17th and 18th centuries. Crum is a shortened version of a much longer Gaelic name. With my Scottish, Irish, and Welsh friends ready to criticize any errors I make in pronunciations or spellings, which are quite a bit because I'm an American, I'm leaving this one alone. Uh, to make matters a bit more challenging for genealogists, Crum could be Crum with a B dropped. In that case, the name is found in England. Since the Crum family presumably lost membership in Dumbarton, I would venture that the Crum lines in southern Appalachia have roots in Scotland. However, if you find that a grandparent spelled the name with a B at the end, I just might be wrong. Number 10, Lee. I read somewhere that the famous Lee family in Virginia has roots in Westmoreland, which is an old county in northwestern England. It's now part of the county of Cumbria. Harrison shows a number of points of origin and meanings for Lee. One meaning comes from Middle English. It was given to a dweller at a meadow or pasture. It could also refer to a shelter. In Gaelic, it could be a word for gray. 
McClysett claims that Lee is widespread in Ireland, so it looks like the surname in southern Appalachia could have arrived from England, Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. All right, that's all I have for you today, folks. I hope you got something out of the discussion and will join me again here on The Vantage Point. Please be gracious to each other. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.